On this channel, I've recently traveled around the UK. Places like London, Manchester, Glasgow, and Liverpool. Simply put, my favorite destination was Liverpool. Its turbulent history, reputation, which is either good or bad depending on who you ask, makes it a fascinating city. And oh yeah, I almost forgot, it's the best football city in the world. So let's head it down to Pierhead, where we'll meet with Jack Rigby from Tours by Locals. Jack will be our local tour guide today as we explore some of what Liverpool has to offer. Take it away, Jack. I'm happy to show you around here, Brian, show you around Liverpool. I always start my tours off down at the, the pier head here. Um, just in front of me here, you've got three of the most iconic buildings in the city. We call them our three graces. Um, and probably the most iconic building in the city is the Royal Liver Building. Any Liverpool fans will spot the two liver birds on top of that building. When that opened in 1911, yeah. it was actually the, the tallest building in Europe, which is quite shocking to look at just a hundred hundred odd years later wow, because yeah. it looks relatively small nowadays but the liver bird is it's synonymous with both the city and the football club you've got your liverpool jacket on there the liver bird has been the crest on our shirt since the 1950s but when liverpool won the league in 1901 the uh, the winners medals that the players were given by the club they actually featured a, a, a liver bird yeah, so yeah. it's been kind of intrinsically linked to the city and the club for a long time but all the way back to the 1200s the liver bird was created and um, king john kind of came to liverpool and wanted to set it up as a, a town a borough at that point there was just between 100 and 200 people who lived in in liverpool it was a small fishing village so you look around today it was probably almost the amount of people you know you'd see in this area on a busy day that actually lived here he thought it was a great place strategically to set up his ships um you know you've got the river mersey just behind me which leads onto the irish sea and he needed an official stamp an emblem to make liverpool a, a town a borough and the liver bird was created and as i say nowadays it's it's synonymous with both the club and the city we're standing in front of a monument for the titanic correct yeah yeah i mean growing up brian like I, when i remember watching the film obviously with leonardo dicaprio yeah. and i remember seeing on the side of this big ship when i was a kid hms liverpool so i always thought as a young young lad that the titanic sailed from liverpool obviously it sailed from southampton it was built in belfast but it was a Liverpool ship. The papers were signed here. The White Star Shipping Line, who own the Titanic, their headquarters is literally just behind the Liver Building over there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is a, a memorial to the 32 men who were sadly trapped and lost their lives in, in the engine room. Uh, and later it's been widened to, to all men, all women, who, who've lost their lives in, in engine rooms. But you can actually see little chunks that have been taken out of it and that's because Liverpool was heavily bombed during World War II. Oh, yeah. um, this was one of the, the world's busiest ports, especially in the 1800s. You know, it's a nice can there. 90% <laughs> of all British trade and 40% of the world's trade came through Liverpool. So it made sense for the Germans to, to heavily bomb us and, and, and this monument, you can see the chunks from, from the bombs there. Following a brief history of the White Star Line, I took a closer look at the Beatles statue since the Beatles are of course originally from Liverpool and off we went to one of my favorite monuments in the entire city. Just outside of what is known by locals as the bombed out church stands a statue commemorating the moment British and German soldiers stopped fighting and played football on Christmas Day 1914. It was then that we hopped back into the car and made our way to the Everton neighborhood. You heard about the history behind Liverpool's crest, so now let's check out the famous structure on the Everton badge. Yeah, so the tower itself is called the Everton Lockup, and um, I've already touched on what Liverpool's badge meant and the history of that. Everton is a little bit different. It's called the Everton Lockup, and it was built in 1787. And the reason it's called the Everton Lockup is because it was where they used to lock up the criminals. So in this area, if people were misbehaving, thieves, vagabonds, drunks, they would literally lock them up in that small tower. In that, in that little door right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly, just there. And then in the morning, depending on what the crime was, they'd either be let out or they would face you know, a, a judge and, and be, be punished. The punish were usually lower level things like clearing out ditches or clearing yeah, rubbish. Yeah. But, you know, Liverpool have the uh, the noble the noble liver bird and no offence to Everton, I am a Liverpool fan. Everton have got the, <laughs> uh, what we call the drunk tank. Yeah. And the shop just over there, that's believed to have been the origins of 
Everton's nickname, the Toffees. They used to sell toffee just out of there. Yeah. This area that we're in now is, is Everton, and this is called Everton Brow, and they're cutting some nice, uh, fresh, fresh grass this there. Have they ever locked up any Liverpool supporters in there? They wouldn't dare, Brian. <laughs> nah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, probably. Do you see if it's open? We can have a try. Might be someone in there. I know, it's good. Ah. Locked. Alright, no one's getting locked up today. Here we are at the famous Goodison Park. Let's take a quick stroll around the stadium, check out some of the statues, monuments, and a little bit about the history of this amazing structure. Yeah, I mean, really old stadium, one of the first major stadiums that was built in the country there was a couple before it like Wolves' ground Molyneux but Everton was was the first kind of major stadium that was purposely built for football um, they moved here in 1892 and when we go over to Anfield I'll, I'll touch on the link between Liverpool and Everton a little bit more um, this is an old stadium a lot of restricted views uh, pillars posts in the way but it's got a lot of great history I mean the most top flight games have been played here than any team in England because wow. Everton have only been out of the top flight. The, you know the the equivalent of the Premier League. It used to be the first division for four seasons since their you know their inception. So the most games have been played in the top flight at this stadium. All right, so over here are a couple monuments dedicated to looks like fans of Everton as well as one particular footballer who's an absolute legend, Dixie Dean. Jackson, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so. You know, Dixie Dean was a player here in the 1920s for Everton. Um, as you can see, they don't just give statues out of football clubs willy-nilly. Um, and he still holds the record for the most goals in a, a top-flight English season. He scored 60 in 39 games. Going into the last game, he was three goals off the record that he needed to get. And he scored a hat-trick in, in his last game to get that record. So quite an achievement. Yeah, you really don't get this in many places around the world. A church right next to a football stadium. Yeah. And both Anfield and Goodison, they're, they're really in the heart of like a residential area. And yeah. that's one of the reasons why Everton have had to move stadium. You know, Old Trafford's in an industrial estate, so they've been able to kind of rebuild and, and, and renovate as they've gone. But, you know, you've got houses that are so close to these stadiums, it's difficult to expand. Yeah. Last time I'm seeing Goodison's Park, it's the first time and last time. Yeah. Now let's quickly check out the site of Everton's new home, and then we'll change focus of Liverpool Football Club. So you've literally just got the River Mersey just behind where the new stadium's going to be. Um, it's going to be a 52,000 seater stadium, so uh, you know an improvement on Goodison Park. And for them, it's been a long time coming, and for them, they'll hope that will propel them to the next level. Obviously, last season they uh, escaped yeah. relegation by the skin of the teeth, and it was you know a big celebration for Everton. Yeah. So a lot in store for Everton Football Club, and like Jack said, hopefully this stadium elevates them in the future. I know there's mixed emotion, I'm sure, about moving out of Goodison Park, but at the same time, uh, I, I know a lot of supporters and fans are probably excited for this here in Liverpool as well as globally. This is kind of a quick look around outside here. It looks like here's probably a pub across the yeah, street. Yeah, very so, old pub there. Very old pub. Their business is going to be booming. And then across looks like maybe an old... Just a like, it's a timber yard, yeah, yeah timber yard. By, by timber, so down here is a real, it's part of like the docking community, this is, you know, not far from here is where all the container ships come in, um, so a lot of kind of working class pubs and houses down this end. <laughs> All right, so we're inside the concourse of Anfield and we're approaching the window because across the way, across this park here, you actually can see Goodison 
And I kind of want to hear a little bit more information about that jack. It seems like it's really just, what, a quarter of a mile away? Yeah, I mean, at most half a mile. They're the two closest uh, stadiums in, in the Premier League um, and they're separated by a park called Stanley Park. That was actually where Liverpool were going to build a new stadium. That was our previous um, American owners who were supposed to follow th follow on with that. It didn't happen. We're okay. now owned by you know Fenway Sports Group, John Henry, and they've chose to redevelop this stadium, which is great for us. We get to keep the history of Anfield, but the history of Anfield goes all the way back to Everton. Everton used to play at this stadium before Liverpool for around eight years. Um, uh, the guy who owned the land was called John Holding. Um, there's a statue, a bust of him outside, and he wanted to increase the rent. He wanted to make more money. He brewed alcohol. He wanted to sell his beers at the games to the Everton supporters, and he was the chairman of Everton, but their board, board of directors, they didn't like the rent, uh, the rent increases, and ultimately they split from him, and they decided to move over there, and they built Goodison Park and started playing there from 1892. So John Holding had a had a stadium with no team, and he wanted to keep the name, actually Everton, but he wasn't allowed. They took that with them. What he did keep was the blue kits. Liverpool actually played in blue kits first before we changed to red, and he decided to call our team after the name of the city, Liverpool Football Club, of course. So the Liverpool dressing room is over that side, the away team is over that side, but Liverpool players always line up on the right hand side here, even though the dressing room's the other side. And the reason is when they run out of this tunnel, they always run to the right hand side towards the cop end. But on their way, they'll always touch the sign as a mark of respect and good luck. Liverpool players have done that since the you know the inception of the sign. But when Jurgen Klopp first came, he banned the players from touching the sign unless they'd won a trophy with the club. And there was only one player who'd won a trophy with the club at that point, um, Jordan Henderson. He'd won the League Cup in 2012. He's been here for a, a long time. Once they'd won the Champions League in 2009, all the players could touch it then. Yeah, so you've got the four stands here, you've got the Anfield Road end, you can see the construction's going on there, that's going to increase the capacity to 61,000. You've got the main stand here, that's our biggest stand. Um, the Sir Kenny Dalgleish stand, used to be called the Centenary Stand, they named it that in 1992 to celebrate our centenary year, our 100th birthday. Um, and then just a few years back they renamed it after great legend say Kenny Dalglish Liverpool player Liverpool manager and um, one of the best to ever play for the club but then you've got easily the most you know the most passionate supporters sit and, and have stood in the cop it's our most famous end um, and the name actually comes from the Boer War in South Africa British troops fought out in South Africa um, a lot of them were from this local area and they lost their lives on a hill called Spion Kop, which roughly translates in Dutch Afrikaans to Spy Head, Spy Hill. So once news got back to Liverpool, the local newspaper, the Liverpool Echo, they were the first to recommend the idea that Liverpool call our own, which this was just a muddy embankment back then, mm -hmm. um, call this the, the Spy on Cop, and nowadays we call it the Cop for short. They added the roof in 1928, which just added to the atmosphere. Obviously back then there was no seats in the Cop, so some games you'd have up to 30,000 supporters stood at that end of the stadium. 
there was only two toilets use your imagination I'll, t I'll tell you what they used to call this bottom part the yellow mersey so you can you can imagine what went on there but it was a you know a great place of character um that's where you'll never walk alone started to be sang from it was one of shankley's favorite songs originally from the american mu musical carousel uh, liverpool band covered it jerry and the pacemakers in 1963 they released that and um liverpool fans would sing songs in the charts that was one of the ones they sang bill shankley picked it as one of his favorite songs um for 1965 desert island discs you know if you were stuck on a desert island what songs would you want that was one of the ones he picked and ever since it's been liverpool's official anthem yeah, so this is the corner where Trent crossed it into Origi. A famous match against Barcelona, where Liverpool came back from a deficit in the Champions League. Yeah, we were obviously 3-0 down from the game at the new Camp, and it was looking quite bleak. But that was one of those real Anfield nights where, you know, the atmosphere just absolutely carried the players to the next level. Trent crossed it in here to Origi. Very quick, quick thinking, and it was a, a class goal. And, and you know it, we, it, we got there and we won it and you could argue it's thanks to the ball boy who sits right there who got the, who, yeah, who yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly quick thinking on on, on all parts He's stuck. <laughs> I don't, I'll be stuck you here forever. Stay in forever mate. Yeah, it's all right. I'm, I'm gonna go back to that. <laughs> If you enjoyed this Liverpool Football History Tour, then I would recommend that you check out the full Anfield Stadium Tour. I would also like to say a special thanks to Jack Rigby from Tours by Locals. Here's Jack with more info about his tour. Link is in the description below. I'm Jack Rigby uh, and as you've seen we've just been on a tour around Liverpool, the city and of course the football stadium. If you're ever in Liverpool, you want to do a Beatles tour, uh, a Liverpool City tour or a football tour, hit me up on Tours by Local site and uh, I can show you around. Are right, you heard Jack. Link is in the description below to Jack Rigby's tour here in Liverpool. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.